now go to Mr. Kajada as an entrepreneur and a business person. Um, how has it changed? Um, well, it's much different for me because a lot of my a lot of my actual work is actually in the field. While it is that we have a lot of um, office work, and one of the things we have done for a very long time was we have we have always used um, the the internet to do a lot of our stuff because of a lot of our accounting and records and follow-ups and documentation is actually not even done in St. Lucia. It is actually done in India. Although the time difference, but we have used it and it has worked. That is on this part of it. When it comes to the actual work, which is the construction work, but you know it has affected us majorly because we had to stop, people cannot move. Um, it's just made it so different. Our timelines, our suppliers, shipping, moving, moving people around to the different islands. This, this, this has been crazy. I, I, I mean, I got guys stuck in the other islands for three months, not being able to move. And what I, what I normally do is to move the, the various skills around in the different islands. That was not, that was not able to happen. So we got, we got held back on a, lot of, on a lot of stuff that we had to do because the, the personnel was stuck in the other islands. However, um, I think it's going to be a major change. Um, there's a lot of good that's going to come out of it. And um, one of the good was um, we used to see a lot of people running away to the US and Canada. Now people want to run back to the Caribbean because it seems to be safer than there. So it, it, there is good coming out of it. And all those people who wanted to run away actually are looking for jobs and want to stay and want to be almost um, secure now in jobs because they know it's not really as secure out there. So there is a lot of good in it. And I think what we have to do is pick the best out of it and see how we could. It's going to be a change. We just have to accept it and we have to work with it. The disadvantage of it is um, the lesser, the, or, or, or the, the persons who are not as good are the ones that are going to be stay without work. The better people are always going to be in jobs. I mean, it was always that way, but with everything closing in, it, you, we're, going to see it, we're going to see it more. So even in the construction industry for us, all those hotels and all those warehouses and all those construction activities we used to see people coming up with, I think that's going to be dead for the other two for the another two years until people get back to, to used to getting things done to move it. There are going to be very few items of, of, of work that was, is going to come up. I mean, road construction will never stop. It always continue, but it's going to slow down. But when we come to the actual building construction, even for homes that would have slowed down because the banks are not lending, people's jobs are not secure. So we are going to see a major, major downturn in the economy in every sector of it. However, I think agriculture and food sustainability for us should be paramount on the minds of governments of all of the islands. As you know, there is going to end up being a food shortage eventually. Because even when we imported our food, those people have major problems and bigger than us. So for us to be able to sustain ourselves, I think we need to have a major thrust in agriculture and self-sustainability. Um, there's a lot that I can say. I mean, I, I think I need to give, give another chance here. But for, for the future of work in my industry, I, I see it's, it's, it's so much different. It's going to make actual construction activities are a little more expensive because of the way it is. The, the, the time on producing a job is going to be significantly longer because you cannot get the inputs, you cannot get people moving. You, you're restricted so much on it, but we just have to get used to a new world. And I think that new world, you know, again, who can organize better is going to survive a lot better. Thank you so much. And I noticed that you sort of um, ran into our next segment, but um, I'm very excited to hear what each and every pan panelist has to so say. So I would now that. go on to Mr. Um, Gajada. Um, I'm very excited to hear your opinion. Traditional education versus skills. What is your view? What advice would you give to young persons, et cetera? Um, Dr. Preville and uh, Dr. Remy, um, 
put a lot together and with all what they said, it has its place. Um, however, for me, because of the type of business I'm in, um, you know, a lot of that goes out the window. How do you get automation to go and put the blocks in a building? How do you get to build a road automated? You know, all of this, even garbage collection from the lowest levels of, of, of people being, you know, laborers, mechanics, a lot of this, you still need people. However, with the new technology, yes, they have to, they have to learn the, the, the skills of computers and how they work because, you know, right now, most of the vehicles and equipment uh, all computerized. You could literally um, download it and see what's going on with it off your phone. So, but people are going to learn it. I am not afraid for the, the future generations in this as, I mean, you know, kids now, they, they, I think they're born with the digital, the digital era within them, even from the first day they're born. At three years old, they tell you, look, what's up? What's up me? At three years old. So I, I don't think it's going to be a major problem. However, if we put it in the context of the Caribbean, our small space, I think it's a much different than for the larger spaces. It is, it, it's going to take a really long time for us to go to that area where we use robots and so on to get anything done. First of all, our economy is scale. It just doesn't make sense to invest in that type of um, equipment. So we are still going to be using all of our, our, all of our people. What we are going to continuously have, which we still have now, um, is the lack of the higher education and skills for moving into the next level. We have that. We all have it. So even for me, I am I am the dealer for uh, construct only construction equipment. Even to get personnel to be able to repair and follow up on the new equipment, it is extremely difficult. We have to be training and training and training persons, but. You know, most people within the Caribbean, within my space, they're not ready or they don't even care to even learn and be better. I think we have a major problem bigger than, you know, what's out there, what you listen to news, CNN, what you hear the reports, that, that's on a really much bigger scale than what we have. It cannot work within our space. I think many have tried and they failed because it just cannot work. We need to look at our space, what's necessary for our space and how is it going to work. What I think we need is, you know, the, the, the actual skills. And one of the things I think we need to move to is vocational schools. I think every student needs to pass through one year of vocational schooling. People buy a car and they don't know how to change a tire. They don't even know where the wheel spanner is. How can we continue to deliver that? I have had to stop on the road and help men and women because they don't know how to deliver it. They don't even know where to find it. I mean, those are small things, but they are big. But I mean, those are well-educated people. Those are people that, I mean, like, you know, I couldn't fit in the shoes when it comes to education, but the small things they have no idea how to do. Those are things we have to continue doing for ourselves. We need to continue. We need to focus on the smaller people. But, you know, Dr. Pavel said that we need to go and learn to be at the higher levels. One of the problems is, you know, Dr. Remy had to leave St. Lucia, not because she wanted to leave, but she had to leave because if she had stayed here, her skills would not have been utilized around her. So what do we do? Go learn, educate ourselves, and our small space cannot use us and our skills and make us any better. So what happens? They all go away. How do we, how do we encompass what we have and the people that we have to utilize them and make us better? Most of the people who went and got further education, they all left and only because you cannot use it. Right now, I'm, I'm sure you still know that of so many people who went to universities overseas, came back, and still not doing any job close to what they went to school for, whether they liked it or not. But the fact is, it is not available. How do we look at this and how do we prepare for the people of our region and what we do and how do we make it better for them? 
Um, you know, agriculture, what can we do with our terrain to mechanize agriculture? Very little. You can, I mean, you know, with, with our terrain, you still need people to walk up a hill and carry a bag of fertilizer that can't carry the fruit down. There's very little space that you can mechanize. So in our region, mechanization of agriculture is a no, with the exception of Trinidad and Guyana, which has a little flatter space. All of the other islands, it's just too mountainous for you to mechanize it. But we still have to eat. We still have to feed our children. And I think it's going to get more expensive and more difficult in the coming years based on COVID. Because just what governments and what people are trying to push is not going out and work. Let's stay at home. Let's do it at home. Let's do this. So it, it just, it, it, I, I can foresee a food shortage and that food shortage is going to be bigger than people expect it to be how do we deal with it how do we live for our region and i'm not thinking globally i'm thinking for our region for my space right my space saint lucia saint vincent grenada dominica um trinidad is a little different guyana i think has the is, is best poised to develop and do very well because they have the land they have the people, and I, I think it, it's well it's well placed now. They, they have the money as well. But what happens to us, and how do we deal if our generations come in? Let's go back to the schools. We go back to the schools now with everybody being home, being online, not meeting other people. How do they interact? What are friends going to become? Will, will they be really friends? And how do we deal with each other? When you, when you leave school, being in your environment, in your little hole, in your little space only, and you have to go out into the real world for you to meet people, how is it going to be? How are they going to react? Because they're not used to being around people. It is going to be so different. Things are going to have to change so much. Our whole personalities will change. Yes, like you, like you say, our passports, our licenses, um, our, 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 our cash system of payment. A lot of things are going to change. But for our region, we still need to make the, all those preparations for what we just cannot do. It, it just cannot do. It will not work in our region. And we need to prepare ourselves for what's going to happen. I think a lot of our leaders and a lot of the people who make the decisions are people who are well educated and see things from a total different perspective and point of view, living behind all of those people because they cannot apply to those people. I mean, maybe that's why I can apply myself to it and maybe that's why I can talk about it. But I see so many people left behind in all of this. I still have workers who, don't, who cannot use an ATM card. They cannot sign a name. So it's going to take a long time. I think it's going to take another 20 years when, you know, kids from now start to grow up for us to be able to, to see a major difference. But we still have a long time to move on before that, before that happens. Our government needs to focus. I would like to bring a message where our, government needs to, our governments need to focus on food security. I don't think they have understood the importance of food security and our people are going to go hungry. The cost of living just to eat is becoming ridiculous. And you know, the super, the, the, and it's not the supermarket's fault. It is just that bringing it out from overseas is actually very expensive, a lot more expensive than it ever used to be. Next year, and we, what, what happens to us with another, with another year of COVID? where you have so many people that are not going out, what's going to really happen? Are we going to make some computer food to eat? And, and you know, those are the things we have, we have to think about um, in the real world. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not at the other level where, you know, a, lo a lot of work takes place in house. You could do it from home and so on. This has its place, but the reality of the basics of living I mean, you still must have a toilet, you still must have a plumber, you still must have water coming to your house. You, you still must have electricity. 
and so many other things that you still must have that I don't think that they have taken into consideration. And I think we need to look at, split it down the line and look at the lower half for, for a little while and see what's going to happen. There's going to be such a massive void space at the one point in time that we are going to be surprised at our own self. What happened? Why did it happen? Why did we allow it to happen? And you know, that is what I would like to bring across to make sure that we think about it, that we don't create that big void, that we step so far up that we forget the middle space and realize that when we are looking to come back down, the steps were half gone. Wow, thank you so much. Um, this really provided a balance to the And I would allow Mr. Kajada to speak because he seems quite eager right now. <laughs> so you can go ahead. I mean, point well taken that we all have our space. However, with all the information that they're going to give me for agriculture, when the rain is going to fall and when the sun is going to shine, who's going to go and do the planting? You must have the person to go and do the planting. I'm not saying it does not have its space. All I'm saying is I am talking about my space. I want, I want to focus that my space, I'm not talking about globally. I'm talking about my space. What happens within my space? And what you're talking, my space is a much different from what you're talking. So yes, who's going to be the taxi driver? Soon from now, there'll be no taxi driver. There'll be, there'll be a car with nobody in it. And I understand that. It's already there. But at that point in time, the level of skill of the person necessary to monitor the car with nobody it's only one for 100,000 cars. What happens to everybody else? Have we made space for everybody that we are getting rid of? Have we ever thought of that? What we are doing? I mean, with a click of a button, I now can go and get my whole balance sheet. Once the information has been put in, all I could do is just click one, one key and I get a balance sheet. So those are counting that we needed, but guess what? We still need people to put the information in and we still need to put them in properly. What I'm, what my point is we must not forget about those other people that are going to be left behind. And many of them are going to be left behind because of what's happening. And many of them are not used to, cannot, will not. You know, the level of thinking of the people growing up is nowhere close to what people used to be. I used to have to learn times table and I used to have to learn up to 12 timetable behind the exercise book. Now everybody goes to a phone to answer what is two by two. Yes, it has changed. What happens to our people in terms of the level of thinking? And if we had to have a, a, a if we had to, a, 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 if I had to just ask a question, what is 12 times 12? Somebody will have to think and maybe get the calculator. But this is where I'm going to, where, what are we going to do with all those people that we're leaving behind? Yes, you have gone. I am going to, and I would like to go. Why? Automation and the new technology that is available makes it happen a lot easier, a lot faster. That's a reality. Will I do it? Yeah. If I could get the trucks with no drivers, I'd be the happiest man because I know for sure he ain't going to drink rum because it's only because of a guy. So I would like to get the trucks with no drivers. However, how far is that away from us within our space? For it to really work, GPS, traffic, we have so much to do within our own space. How far are we away from it? The reality is I think we will go 20 years away from it. What do I deal with now? How do I deal with it? What do I deal with in terms of the people that I have around me? How do I prepare for them? I have over a thousand workers within the region. And those, those over a thousand workers within the region, they not, they cannot apply to what you're saying. They are very far from what you're saying. Yes, while automation does well, I mean, I have concrete plants and I have asphalt plants that are fully automated. I can go on my phone and maybe make, make asphalt or make concrete. That's great. But how many people, how many people 
can I get within the region that would want to stay and do it within the salary that I can pay? And I say that because anytime you have someone with a little skill, their demands are extremely high because you cannot find too many around. There's not even the competition there. So it makes it extremely difficult, more expensive for us. Economy is a skill again. So I get your point. <coughs> you are right. Yes, we can move on. Yes, we have to move on. But I am working within my space. What I have right now, what is to come? The, the, the outer world is going to inevitably make it happen. And we are followers. We cannot be leaders. We could only follow to ensure that we come within it. Look at the cars that we drive now. Every single car that we drive now has a port that you just plug a computer to. And it tells you everything that's wrong with it, where it's wrong with it. But we have very few people that even understand how to use it. Have we prepared in our region, how many people have we prepared to move to that new world? We talk about the new world. Have, are we preparing them? Which school, where do we have within our region that prepares people for that? We have not done that yet, but I see that we're moving forward to much further where we cannot even maintain what we have. What do I have to do? I have to bring people in from Korea, bring people in from China. Not even the US that you could find people anymore that you could take and bring across. It's extremely difficult. And the one or two that you could find within the US the cost is prohibitive. So we have to go much further to bring them across. And thanks to air travel has become a lot cheaper. And it actually makes a lot more sense to bring somebody out of China and Korea than going to the US. So I don't know if you have ever tried to get any technical stuff done out of the US to find how difficult and expensive it is for you to get it done. Europe, we can't even talk about it. The cost is exorbitant. What do we do for ourselves and how do we continue to live for our region? Yes, it has its place. Yes, we're going to move there. But at what pace are we going to move there? And what are we going to leave behind in the process of moving to that direction? And what void are we going to create? I mean, I can continue and continue, but I mean, you're, you're, I, 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 I understand you, but remember, I have it. I experience it every day. Every other day, right now, I mean, as I sit here, once I leave you, I leave and I go to the airport to do a job on the airport in St. Lucia because we work at night. And why do I personally have to go? Because I cannot find someone to use a specialized piece of equipment. And it, it may sound strange to you and you ask me why, but it's a specialized piece of equipment that you cannot find people to use. And can we get people that want to learn it? It's more difficult than you would want to believe because they don't even want to learn it. So we are in a very, very difficult position when you're in that real world. I just happen to be in the real world to understand it from the bottom to halfway. You're, I think you're on halfway going to, to up. So I think we'll see it much <laughs> differently. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Mr. Kajara. And 